I, uh, I, I started trading foreign exchange in uh, 2003, yeah, the end of 2003. It's kind of a strange way that it came around that, um, you know, I, tr I traded equities during the, the kind of the dot, the dot com uh, boom and, and crash. And uh, I was actually, um, I was actually looking at uh, sort of starting up my own import export company. That's what I wanted to do. Um, I actually I did some uh, did some work. I did some classes. I went and actually worked with a mentor though about setting up my own I import export company. And uh, what came to my uh, what came to kind of my knowledge I was doing a little bit of due diligence on his books and about how how his business worked. And then it sort of turned out that something like for the, the previous year, sort of like forty percent of his profits had come from the the differences in, in the sort of the foreign exchange, but from between you're buying in one country, selling it in another, and having to sort of do all of the kind of the the moving uh, cash around the world to pay for these things. And I just I noticed you know that that was that kind of struck me as as kind of you know a, an opportunity. Um, I'd uh, I'd bought the uh, kind of Cisco pill about it being the internet economy and how everything's going to be online and such, and uh, you know the thought of actually um, you know having my own business with 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 staff and and with like bonded warehouses and having to do all the paperwork and deal with suppliers etc. As opposed to actually just being able to sort of trade and just online and, and be my own boss and run my own business. That kind of you know that's kind of that was fascinating. Uh, you know that had a, a lot of appeal to me. And uh, sometimes it's strange the way these things work out that about a, a week or two later, um, a sort of a South African friend of mine sort of showed up in London and, you know, he told me what he was doing and then he opened up and he said, well, actually, I'm, you know, the foreign exchange markets are now open to retail traders and this is what I'm doing. This is what he was doing in South Africa. And uh, so we kind of started trading together. Uh, when I when I started trading foreign exchange, I had to, um, I, I couldn't, I had to open a, a trading account in the US to trade foreign exchange. Um, because there was a kind of a chicken and egg uh, sort of um, situation here in the UK, whereas um, you couldn't open a foreign exchange trading account unless you had experience of trading foreign exchange. And so it was a kind of a real chicken and egg. You, 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 know, uh, it doesn't, you couldn't get around that. So the way I got around it was I opened actually an account in the US. And this must have been maybe 10, 11 years ago. And you know, think, things are very different now. Things are you know, very, very different. But um, that was, you know, that was back. Um, that was back then and such. So, um, so yeah, I started, uh, I started working, started trading with a South African friend. And, um, you know, it's, uh, I, I, remember it, I remember it vividly that we did, um, we did sort of four months of like demo trading. Okay, I, I set myself some rules about okay, you're not going to go live. You're not going to, you know, you're not going to, um, you're not going to sort of uh, risk live money in the markets until you've shown that you can do three to four weeks of just profitable trading week after week after week, just being very disciplined. Uh, and uh, so we started kind of December two thousand and three, and about April two thousand and four. That's when I, that's when I, uh, that's when I went live and. Uh, I uh, I remember it. Uh, you know, I remember it to, to 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 this day. Actually, I remember you know, sort of April two thousand and four, sort of live trades uh, in the market. Um, I remember it was like I had two trades. You know, one on the pound dollar, one on the euro dollar, and it was just a, a great day. And and I think I think I sort of, I think I harvested. I think it was pretty much about about one hundred and seventy three pips off the uh, off those first two trades. You know, and uh, yeah, I won't deny there was a sort of a big smile on my face at the end of the day. You know, here we go. This is it. Stand aside, George Soros. You know, there's a new boy in town. <laughs> Here we go, and such. And um, that was uh, it. Was great, you know. And for about for about two months or so after that, you know, it was fantastic. You know, it was just we were winning, and when we we started to expand our repertoire of, of, of what we were trading from FX to start trading oil, started trading some shares and indices, um, and then it's you know it started to go it started to go wrong. Okay, we were. We kind of just really, you know, we were a little bit overconfident. We overextended ourselves, the and we went through having gone like sort of eight weeks of you know just trading brilliantly. Then we started to you know to, to really trade poorly in terms of the results. But the thing that ensured that I survived, where the vast majority of people fail, it is simply because um, you know I I never ever traded without a stop loss, and and I never risked more than a small portion of my account in any one trade. So I, I'd learned as being I'd learned from being a battle manager in the Air Force that, you know, the first rule is, you know, wherever possible, you, you know, you live to fight another day, you know, and, and, and I learned, you know, I had it had it really drummed into me right from the word off about managing risk. It's all about managing risk. So when I came to trading life, you know, financial markets, 
you know, it was all about managing risk first and foremost. And so even when we had a, a, a period of, you know, of poor trading, it, you know, we only lost a small portion of the account who meant that we could come back to fight, you know, each, uh, you know, come back to fight another day. And uh, I think, you know, as we'll sort of talk about later, that was, that's kind of one of the things that helped me survive. And I think it's one of the things that, that, that contributes to, to the uh, sort of, uh, to the kind of let's say the, uh, the the kind of failure rate of, of an awful lot of retail traders is that they you know, they fail to manage risk as their as their first and foremost priority. Um, but yeah, I was very fortunate. You know, we had the little slump and then we got better. And then over time, just you know, just got better as a trader as I built more experience. You know, and uh, I'd I'd love to say that it was kind of like an overnight success story, but you know, but it wasn't. You know, it's like um, it's like learning any new skill, any talent. You know, you really had to work at it. You know, and, and had to. Had to you know sacrifice a great amount to actually you know throw myself into it to 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 to, to become you know a kind of a world class trader. That's that was my aim, um, and so my trading style has changed over the years. You know I used to be a kind of uh, an intraday trader. I used to uh, sort of um, I would call it high intensity rather than high frequency in terms of my trading. Um, high intensity in that you know I was pretty much sat there uh, on the edge of my seat you know from sort of from sometimes from like 5 30 in the morning through till sometimes like 10 o'clock in the evening you know I'd be there and I'd be managing intraday trades okay and and it was quite you know um, you know I always managed risk and I was always happy to to follow my plan I was very disciplined in my trading but that um, that takes its toll you know that takes its toll on you okay especially when you're you know you're trading for a fund and, and doing that as well so uh, um, about uh, about three years ago, about summer of three years ago now, I um, I had a kind of major sporting injury, so I managed to uh, I, uh, I play a version of uh, baseball, and I managed to uh, rupture my uh, my hamstring, my uh, my quads, and my sartorius muscle playing sport, and uh, it was pretty painful. I wouldn't wish it on anybody, but it pretty much had me laid up for sort of three months afterwards and uh, as part of the rehab I was working with like physiotherapists and physical therapists and such uh, and, and they had they had uh, they concluded that all those years of being sat on the edge of my seat okay had, had put pressure upon my uh, pressure upon my hamstrings and such uh, and that was uh, contributed to the, the kind of uh, the, 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 the sporting injury all those years spent sat on the edge of my seat intraday trading Took its took its toll when I you know when I managed to, to rupture all those muscles in my leg, and uh, you know one of my own mentors said to me that you know if you don't fix the problem the problem fixes you and uh, that I think that's what that's what happened there that um, that um, yeah the problem fixed me so I literally you know I was uh, I was hospitalised and I, uh, I you know I couldn't literally I couldn't trade you know because I couldn't I could not quite literally sit sit on a seat it was that um, it was that painful so. It forced me to change the way the way I operate, the you know the way I worked, and so I moved away from that sort of um, intraday trading to, to actually um, just trading, sort of a longer time frames. So primarily now, most of my work is uh, is kind of on weekly, daily, and, and four hourly charts. Okay, and so the, I spend a little bit of time at the weekend, and then a little bit of time at the sort of start and at the end of the day, just. Um, Doing my analysis and and effectively sort of uh, you know placing trades and managing trades. Um, if I had to sort of sum up my trading philosophy over overall, I buy strength, I sell weakness, uh, and I look to enter on a pullback, and and that's 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 my philosophy. Uh, there's more there's more to it than that, but as a general you know overview, that's how it works. The return on investment in terms of the trading those long time frames has, has been magnificent. Not only not only in terms of profitability, but just also in terms of uh, the kind of the the, the physical time and, and the kind of the emotional energy that you have to put into to, to, to trading well. So that's um, that has been uh, that has unlocked uh, the opportunity for me to do lots of other uh, lots of other things. So helping with other businesses, helping you know uh, helping uh, helping out with family, etc. That has changed the way I operate, and um, I suppose. You know, most of the time, anyway. You know, when I speak to people or speak to people who come to me, when people come to me because they they want to learn how to intraday trade. It's um, you know, I have to have a little bit of a conversation about whether it's really the the the, the right avenue for them to go down. It's uh, intraday trading is uh, you know it can be done and it can be profitable, but it's also you know it's also hard work. And, and anybody who tells you it isn't is you know it isn't really doing it. It's um, it's uh, it's full on, and it's it's you know uh, the way I describe it to people is that you know you wouldn't um, 
you know you wouldn't you wouldn't think you could fly a jumbo jet after doing two days uh, of training on, on an intraday you know training course and you wouldn't think you could drive a formula one car just because you've got uh, just because you've got your you know your driving license um, and yet people think they can intraday trade you know successfully just straight off the bat having just done you know a, a two-day course or, or you know read something on the internet and what have you if um, you know, to become a Formula One racing driver takes you know years of dedication. You know, because of the the ability to, to actually operate at that kind of intensity, that level, and uh, it's the same with uh, I think it's the same with intraday trading. To operate at that kind of level of intensity takes you know takes years of of, of, of training and dedication. And uh, you know, for, for for a lot of people, a lot of people they you know they don't have the they don't have the time for that, and you know they don't have the you know they may not have the inclination you know and such. So it's about finding a way that um, a person can engage with the markets that that works with their personality and with their with their lifestyle.